Mother McLaughlin and this entire great session, Joan Board, I present to you our leader, God's man of the hour, our leader, the servant of this great church. Everybody raise your hands and say, Jesus, Jesus. thank you for Bishop Patterson. Keep on in the name of Jesus. Bishop Patterson. Thank you very much. You may be seated. I will not take but a very, very few minutes of your time. May God bless Mother McLaughlin and <clears throat> thanks to her. I would like just to acknowledge two personalities here. The Bible lets us know if you would have friends, you must be friendly. And we don't want anybody of uh, another religious organization visiting our convocation yes, without feeling welcome. So on our platform, if they were, I suppose on the platform, wherever they are, if they would just stand and let us see them, the Bishop J.M. Covington of the United Holy Church is with us. Bishop Covington. God bless you. Give me a great big God bless you. And we have the Bishop Mosley of New Jersey. Where's Bishop Mosley? Give him a great big God bless you. All right. We're happy for you. Now, you uh, stopped something just a minute ago, and I can understand why you did it, because we're trying to move expeditiously along with the convocation. But I've got some news for you. And uh, don't get me messed up now. But I've got some news for you. I've been to the bishops' meeting today. I've been to the elders' meeting today. Just for a few minutes. And I've walked up and down these corridors. I'm going to tell you. I may be in my grave and my bones bleached. But if we are ever to have the kind of convocation God wants us to have and that his church justly deserves, we're going to have to stop all of these outside meetings come into this auditorium and let God do some more of what he was just doing. I don't want to raise any offense to the person because we put them there. Somebody put them there. But when I became the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ back in 1968, one of my first priorities in 1969 was to do what Jesus did. Go down in that basement of Mason Temple and around on the ground and get rid of all of those concessions, selling hats and wigs and stockings and shoes. And it almost makes me regurgitate to see this convention like Wrangling Brothers Barnum Balaam show. I wish
wish we would do all of our business in April and let this be the holy convocation of the Church of God in Christ. People come here to be healed. People come here to be saved. People come here to get their broken homes put back together. People come here to have their addicted daughters salvaged from the rubbish of dope. And they're hungry. And they're asking, is there any word from the Lord? And God is not pleased with it. I know it's only so much I can do, but at least I can go on record yes, sir. Yes, sir. of saying it's not right. Yes. It wasn't anything John the Baptist could do about Herod having a Philip, his brother's wife. Nothing he could do. But it is in the Bible, even though he lost his head. It is in the Bible. It's on record. John the Baptist said, it's not right. God wants to save this world through us. But if the salt has lost its savor, it's good for nothing but to be trodden under the foot of men. Holiness is right. If I'm wrong, holiness is still right. If you're wrong, holiness is still right. And God honors only holiness. God not studying about our wigs and permanence and all of our finery and what position we hold in the church. So what? Judas held a position in the church. I, I'm through. One of our one of our own members speaking tonight. Lovely little lady there. But I said, Mother McLaughlin, I know all of the state super. I mean, general supervisors. I was here with Mother Liz Robinson. After Mother Liz Robinson came uh, uh, Mother Coffey. Uh, after Mother Coffey came Mother Bailey. And after Mother Bailey came you. And I said, you did more to put this church together because men didn't feel comfortable going to women's convention until you got there. But now what can we do, Mother? What can we do? to bring these folk out of these committee rooms. Got more business to attend to. And got nothing. What can we do to get them in here to fast and pray and let God have his way? Let souls be saved and bodies healed. Crutches hung up on the wall. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you. Yes, you may say he looks upset. I am. Everybody that knows that God is speaking to him and he's right, stand on your feet and say, yes, Lord. Say it again, yes, Lord. Say it again, yes, Lord. of the Lord tonight, Evangelist Francis Kelly, who is a member of our presiding bishop's church. I'm going to ask that you continue in prayer. I believe the Spirit of the Lord is here, and we are ready for the word of the Lord. Please don't leave. There are very important announcements that you really need to hear. We have obeyed our bishop and we are holding the announcement to the end. But you need to hear them. So stay put until we receive the benediction. Let's say God bless Evangelist Kelly.
God bless you tonight. Would you just tell the Lord, thank you with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. A little praise. He's sweet to my soul. tonight for Jesus Bless you. and what he is to me. Yes. More than that, I praise him for what he is allowing me to become to him. I give honor to him, to my own pastor, presiding Bishop Patterson, yeah. to the general board members and to all of the men of God, to Mother McLaughlin and the women that help her in this ministry. To all of you, I praise God for you. I thank God for this opportunity and all of my dreams. I don't have to say to you that this is the greatest thing that could happen to me, that I would be able to be humbled to stand before God's people and those that I have gotten my inheritance from the Lord Jesus among you that are sanctified. I thank God for you. Would you pray for me? Our theme this year is one gospel for the whole world. We'll be using that scripture a little later on, Mark 16, 15, and we're borrowing from the Old Testament, Jeremiah 6, 16. Yeah, yeah. As you study the Bible, you will find that it does not just contain the words of God. It is the Word of God. All right. Keep in mind that the Bible is not a book of philosophy. All right. Although it is the most philosophical book in the world. It's not a book of science. Right. Although there is no discrepancy between it and the ascertained scientific facts. It's not a history book. All right. Although it is found to be accurate when recording historical facts. You must also keep in mind that the Word of God contains the Word of God. Yeah, yeah. The words of Satan. The words of demons the words of angels, and the words of man. So as we study this word, we must ask ourselves these questions. Who is speaking? 
And to whom is he speaking? Right. To the nation of Israel? To the Gentiles? To the church in general? To some individual? To me or to the whole world? All right. When Jesus spoke to his disciples, and the scriptures, I'm going to read 14 if you don't mind. Mark 14, uh, 16 and 14 says, Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world uh -huh. and preach the gospel to every creature. Now when Jesus spoke to them, it was now plain to them that it was their risen Savior. Because why? They saw him, they him, and they followed his instructions. And before we, church, before we can get this gospel to the whole world, we've got to get another look at him, fix whatever is wrong, and then obey his word. All right. Let me borrow, if I may, a biblical scenario from the Old Testament. Jeremiah. All right. During the latter half of the 8th century, Israel, the northern kingdom, suffered a catastrophic decline after the death of Jeroboam number two. Samaria was totally destroyed and the long succession of ungodly kings along with the dwindling biblical faith spell the downfall of Israel. They stopped believing God. Now Judah, under the degenerate King Ahaz, seemed ready to follow Israel's example of apostasy and look to pagan Assyria for deliverance and guidance rather than the Lord God Jehovah who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When God called the priest Jeremiah, it was a most happy, unhappy time. His message was to men whose desperate nationalism and the politics that they dealt in was all that they had. And he was rejected, of course. He was regarded as a meddler, a traitor, and some sought to crush him. At one time, he even wanted to resign, but for more than 40 years, he preached a hot message of judgment on Judah. It's so easy for us today, like Judah, to look back at the world because the world looks good. The world sometimes looks like they're having more fun. It looks more uh, thingy to do it. They're doing so much and so much is going on in the world and so many times it's easy for us to look back. We can forget sometimes how God brought us through the wilderness of sin. Okay. And gave us a deep, subtle peace in the promised land of the soul where the soul flows with peace and power surrounded by people of our own persuasion those that are sanctified yes some of us even look back at the world and the doings and we slowly gravitate back to the world now we don't backslide all at once we began to go back with little no harm stuff. Thing we pick up first of all the world slang. We'll start throwing that in the Sunday school lesson if you don't watch us. And everybody 
world wants to be popular. And in wanting to be popular, we'll just, if we're not careful, we'll pick up some of that, what it is, man. We pick up uh, sounds of the word. Uh, we change the words to worldly music. Y'all ain't gonna, everybody not gonna like me. I, I just can't, I can't help that. We change the words to worldly music and call it contemporary. But one thing I got on you, God saved me, I was a supper club singer, a nightclub singer. So you can't bring that funny music in here and fool me with it. I know the worldly music when I hear it. I know the blues, I sang enough of it. And they even trying to rap that junk and bring the rap in here. You don't have to rap to me. Just tell me what a friend we have in Jesus. Glory to God. You don't have to rap to me. When I got saved, they were singing just as I am without one plea. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right, my pastor said. You know I'm going to try to show out now. <laughs> Woo! Glory. Uh, we got to be so watchful and and, 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 and then we start looking like the word. We don't go to the nightclub, we just wear the nightclub in here. Glory to God. Got dresses hugging all under your bottom there. And panty wrappers. We don't need no panty wrappers in here. We need some missionaries to tell the young women how to look like women. Oh, oh, long clawed fingernails with your missionary license. I ain't studying you. Looking like a hawk. Your hair are different colors. If it's gray, it's gray. If you're going to make it black, make it black and, and, and go on back. Yeah. 
hips anymore. I used to wear my gown so tight I had to tip, but they told me I couldn't do that over here. They told me I couldn't coat over here. And I scuffled it, I scuffled it, I made it, and I ain't gonna make room for you and your man either. if y'all don't hurry up. Woo, bless the Lord. God made man in his image. Holy. Let me tell you this. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I got that from my brother-in-law. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Listen, God intended for man, let me, let, me, let me, give me about a few minutes with this. He intended for man, his wife and his children to be a unit. Huh? Let me tell you the order God meant for it to be. The man following God. The woman following the, uh, 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 let me do it. Godly man. <laughs> you can't follow him in the nightclub talking about I'm going in there trying to get him saved. Now I'll bring him to church and if he doesn't go to church, you go and pray him on over there. Don't go in the nightclub. Suppose he go to the prostitute house. All right, let's move on. This is what God intended for man to be. And then the children following godly parents. And that's what God intended. We got our roles something mixed up here somewhere. Something's gone wrong. My roles mixed up. You don't want to don't know who wearing the pants and who's the husband and who's the wife and who telling you. And God is not pleased with that. And your homes are failing because of this. I, the, the old folks taught me here, so I'm going to have to teach it the best way I know. Godly parents setting examples for the children to follow. But because you wouldn't obey this gospel, because of disobedience, guess what? Bishop Ford, you heard this, he said this before and I'm going to say it again. Let me tell you what has happened. Man has a lack of a sense of direction. I'm talking about this day's man now. Shirking responsibility. Getting babies and won't feed them. I'm grown. I'm a man. Now you breath and britches. Running from God. Unfaithful. Out of control. I'm going to stay on you a little longer. This is women's night. Because we have such a great role, we're going to have to get it straight here. The woman is now fearful, insecure, nervous, jittery, discouraged, dejected, rejected, better jobs, better education, cars to ride in, machines to wash for us, machines to cook for us, buttons to push. 
push for air, buttons to push for cold water, buttons to push for entertainment, cards to present for clothes, cards to get cash advances, cards to present for vacations to faraway places, creams to make a salt, to lighten up dark splotches, salves to keep us youthful, false hair to make us look feminine, false teeth to brighten up our smile, false fingernails to make us glamorous, and a false face to make folks think you're happy. We need the gospel here. confused, some neglected, some abused, powerless, non-communicable, walked by satanic influence, get rich quick schemes, stressful, stressful peer pressure, group decisions, Group sex, perverted sex, sex with animals, sex with the same gender, sex by self-induced gratification, and some are even trying to change their sex. Just sex, sex, sex. Listen, sex is not a lifestyle. No, no. Sex is the magnificent handiwork of God. He made man and male, and then he made female, no in between. I get so sick of sissies, I don't know what to do. I'm sick of sissies. And half the time they, you know, bring them in somebody's church, fanning over somebody's choir. I'm sick of sissy. My God from on high. We ain't got no men now. They either in jail or on the corner or switching somewhere. God help us. Sisters, 
uh, now I ain't gonna get into that husband business and one and two, but at least don't have it one at the time. I know I can say that. I know I can say that. I ain't getting into nothing else. And tell your, the brothers, it, it's wrong for them to have a wife and a woman too. Tell them that I said that here. Yeah? <laughs> you got to take this gospel out there. In our country today, our political skirts are up and our nakedness is showing to the whole world. We talk about the gospel to the whole world. Not the nakedness of our political skirts being up and everybody seeing us here in America for what we really are. Our promised land is full of sin and corruption and, and poverty and sickness and social inequities for some of our citizens. No wonder, I'm through now, just about. No wonder God called to the prophet Jeremiah. Let's go over and get that 16, 16. 16. First of all, he told him to see if you can find me somebody. In other words, come out of the palaces. Come out, out of your homes and, and get out in the street where the souls are. He said, Jeremiah, I want you to get out in the street and stand in the way. For the whole path, wherein is a good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your soul. And let me tell you, while you're trying to find a good way, you, when you're going back to the whole path, you're gonna need some help. And what I want you to do is call for the morning women. folks. Tell them it's holiness of hell. Church of God in Christ. It's a good thing to tell folks out there. And maybe they'll hear you. But be careful in case they turn around and look at you. Be sure that we're living what we're talking. Be sure that we're practicing what we preach. The world is hungry for the living bread. And we've got the word of God. We know how the Lord saved us. The Lord saved me when I didn't know nothing about holiness. But somebody had taken the gospel. Somebody decided that they were going to win souls for Christ. They came to the nightclub where I was. There in Detroit. And, 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 and I was so high-minded and hearty and, and, and I fixed a big old glass of scotch and water. And I offered the preacher a drink. He said, no, ma'am, I don't drink. I lit me a cigarette and I offered that to him. He said, no, ma'am, I don't smoke. I said, what do you do? He testified to me and told me how he had been addicted to drugs and how his mother and his aunt had prayed for him and how God had delivered him, delivered him from heroin addiction. I listened, but I didn't quite believe it, but it was something in his words. It, it, it was something that, that, that left something with me. And I said to him, pray for me then. I really didn't mean it humbly. But they went back to that little sanctified mission and they prayed. And I got to the place that I couldn't sleep at night. I got to the place that I would drink myself to sleep. I drank so much gin until my hair began to come out of my head. I got so fearful and my nerves got so bad and the, the, the skin began to just parch on my body. I got to the place that I couldn't eat and I couldn't sleep right. and I was seeing things. I said, I'm going crazy, there's something wrong with me. I had gone to New York City and gone to the theatrical school and gone to the flame show bar there on John R Street. Gone 
to the frolic show bar. Yeah. Oh, glory to you. ain't been saved all your days. You know something about that, some of you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> worked in the Apollo when it was really the Apollo then, with Nipsey Russell and Red Fox, and I had my apartment overlooking Central Park West. I married my business manager, who was also a numbers bookie. We booked thirty to $50,000 worth a day of numbers. We paid the police off like they were little boys. But glory down on the inside, I didn't have no peace. Here. He opened the book to Jeremiah 32 and 27, where the Lord, where the Lord was saying, Behold, I am the Lord, I'm the God of all flesh. Ah, glory, is anything too hard for me? And I, I, I gave Jesus my poor, broken heart. He came in one night and, and he saved me. They were singing just as I am without one plea. But then the blood was shed for me, and that thou bids me come to thee. Oh, Lamb, oh, Lamb, I come, I come, I come. I came to the altar. I didn't know what I was coming to do, but something was following me. All right. When I was in my car, that thing was on the seat beside me. When I was in the bed, he was sitting in the chair looking at me. I got to the place, I couldn't go to the restroom by myself. I couldn't stand to be in a closed room. I called Memphis and I told my mama, send somebody, I'm losing my mind. She said, we can't come now, but in two weeks time, your cousin Juanita's gonna be on vacation and I'll send up to Detroit for you. But two weeks was too long. And while my cousin was waiting for vacation time, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Stepped in the little church that Sunday night in November in 1963. They said, Miss Kelly, do you know something? They told me three little words that nobody had ever told me. They said, he said, Miss Kelly, God loves you. <laughs> Nobody ever told me that before. And I, I, I began to think backwards how God had spared me when I tried to kill myself. When I was traveling in show business, watching folks take drugs, he spared me and wouldn't let me become addicted to it. And I, 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 I began to say, if God can help me, I need that help. Yeah, yeah. And they told me to say the sinner's prayer. I said it, and then they said, call Jesus. I said, Jesus. They said, call him again, baby. I said, Jesus. What is that? They said, call him again. Till he walked in, I call him till he stepped in my soul. I call him till he changed my mind. I call him till he changed my ways. I call him till he changed my clothes. I call him till he changed my language. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Tell the world about this. Tell the nation you've been blessed. Tell somebody that Jesus saves. Tell him that he's a keeper. I'm a living witness that he'll mend a broken heart. If anybody know what a wound is, I've been broken hard. You ain't had no trouble till you had man trouble. I had that trouble, and Jesus healed me. He sleeps in the bed with me. He walks with me. He talks with me. He understands me. He takes care of me, and I love him today. I'm blessed name.
your name today. Stand on your feet with me now. Hey! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Somebody in this room tonight, I wouldn't walk out on you if you were trying to get saved. I wouldn't worry that my car was parked and I was trying to get out before somebody else. If your son was on dope and somebody was ready to pray for him, if your daughter was 22, never been married, and they told you she had to have a hysterectomy, I would walk out on you. I'd pray that God would heal her. Oh, Hallelujah. If you had a cancer on the inside of your belly, and I thought you could pray for me, I wouldn't leave. I won't be long, but it would be remiss. It would be a, just unworth at all if we didn't appeal to the souls. Oh, it's this gospel we're trying to get to the whole world. Yeah, yeah. Somebody tonight needs to know Jesus. What would have happened if no one had told you that Jesus saves, satisfies, and sanctifies? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. This is the call to discipleship. I want to pray for somebody who wants to be saved tonight. I want you to step out in the aisle right here right quick. I want to pray for you. Somebody wants to rededicate their lives to the Lord. I'm not going to wait all night. You know whether or not you want this prayer. Come now. And I'm the kind of evangelist when you don't come when I call, don't slip up on the tail end and try to get saved. Somebody here has an effeminate spirit the Lord wants to deliver you from tonight. It's lesbians among us. Don't fool yourself. My God, some of you patting on folks missionaries need healing. God, you don't pat me the wrong way, but there's some of you in here. We need help. I'm not going to ask you what your problem is. I'm not going to embarrass you. But I want to pray. Somebody in our midst tonight just came. You're not saved. and We don't want to embarrass God. Bless those that are coming. They're coming. They're coming. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Lord. Every time I see a young person coming, I imagine it to be my own son. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. It's more that need to rededicate your life to God. It's some soul winners that have lost your zeal. Soul winners that have lost your anointing, come let us pray for you. It's people that are gifted and been called of God to preach and to teach, and the enemy has tricked you out of your ministry. Looking back at Judah, at Israel, come on now. Come on now and let's pray. Let's get this thing straight. Ay, 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 ay. Thank you, Lord.
If you're not praying or coming this way, no talking, no talking or walking. Souls are at stake here. Thank you for your healing. Thank you, Jesus. 